Brahma said, O great sage, when Kama went to Shiva's abode along with his attendants, an adversely surprising incident occurred. Please listen. After going there, the heroic Kama, competent to enchant others, spread all his wiles and charmed all living beings. O sage, spring too showed his prowess in order to delude Shiva. All the trees simultaneously bloomed. Kama and Rati played many a trick. All living beings fell victims of their wiles, but not Shiva, the lord of Ganas. O sage, the efforts of Kama accompanied by spring were futile. He returned to his residence, being cured of his arrogance. O sage, Kama saluted me, and bereft of arrogance and completely despondent, he told me in faltering voice. Kama said, O Brahma, Shiva, an expert in yogic practices, cannot be charmed. Neither I nor anyone else has the power to enchant Shiva. O Brahma, different tricks were tried by me and my friends as well as by Rati. All these became futile in regard to Shiva. O Brahma, listen to the different kinds of efforts undertaken by us in trying to enchant him, and the manner we did them, I shall explain, O sage. When Shiva was in the state of trance with full control of senses, I tried to agitate him, the three-eyed Lord Shiva, through the fragrant cool breeze that blew with force and that usually thrilled everyone. I lifted up my bow and fitted my reputed five arrows. Going round him, I tried to enchant him. Even as I entered the zone, the living beings fell into my power, but Lord Shiva and his ganas were not moved at all. O Brahma, when Shiva went to the Himalayan ridge, Rati, Spring, and I reached that place. Wherever he went, whether on Meru, Nagakeshara, or Kailash, I too went there immediately. Whenever Shiva was out of Samadhi, I used to place a pair of Chakravaka birds in front of him. O Brahma, those birds exhibited diverse gestures of amorous dalliance with brows and other limbs. Many pairs of deer and birds playing about in front of the great Lord Shiva indeed exhibited many gestures of love to excite him. Pairs of peacocks exhibited various gestures of pleasing eagerness with their gambling tricks at his sides and in front of him. Never did my arrow find any vulnerable point in him. O Lord of the worlds, I tell you the truth. I am incompetent to enthrall him. Spring, too, did the needful in enchanting him. O oh, listen to it, O fortunate being. I tell you the truth, the truth alone. He caused the various kinds of flowers to bloom in the place where Shiva was stationed. Flowers such as Champakas, Kesharas, Unagas, Ketakas, Malikas, Kurabakas, etc. He made the lakes abounding in full-blown lotuses in the hermitage of Shiva very fragrant by causing Malaya breezes to blow. He made creepers full of flowers twine round trees as if resting on their laps with great attachment. Seedlings of Dhatura were scattered to beautify the place. On seeing the trees abounding in beautiful flowers rustling in the fragrant breeze, even the sages became slaves of Kama. Then what about other ordinary mortals? In spite of all these, no cause of deflection from steadiness was seen in Shiva, who did not evince any sentimental feeling, not even anger towards me. On seeing these and realizing his ideal conception, I am averse to any further attempt at deluding Shiva. This is my firm opinion that I tell you. When he finally issues Samadhi, we cannot even stand in his presence, within sight. Who can think of charming him? O oh, Brahma, who can stand facing him with eyes blazing like fire and as fearful as flocks of large alligators or a horned animal? Brahma said, On hearing these words of Kama, 
I, the four-faced Lord, though desirous of saying something, did not say anything, and was agitated with anxious thoughts. On hearing the words of Kama, I am incompetent to enchant Shiva, O sage, I heaved a deep sigh due to extreme sorrow. The gusts of wind generated by my deep sighs were of various forms and very violent. They were tremulous and terrible and appeared to have shaking tongues of flames. They played on different musical instruments, drums, etc., of terrible nature and of loud sounds. The groups of beings issuing forth from my deep breaths stood in front of me, Brahma, shouting, Kill! Cut! While they were shouting, Kama heard these words and began to speak to me. O Brahminical sage, on seeing the groups of beings, Kama stopped them and on their presence said, Kama said, O Brahma, O Lord of subjects, O initiator of all creations, who are these terrible, awful heroes? O Brahma, what is the work that these will be doing? Tell me, where will they be staying? Please employ them there. O Lord of gods, after employing them in their task and assigning them proper names and places, be pleased to assign me my future course of action. Brahma said, O sage, on hearing the words of Kama, I, the creator of the universe, spoke to him, showing him the task of the Ganas. Even as they were born, they shouted, Maraya, kill, very frequently. Hence, let their names be Maras. These groups of beings will hinder the activities of all creatures, O Kama, except your worship, as they are engaged in various avocations of love. O Kama, their chief occupation will be to follow you. There is no doubt that they will assist you always. Wherever you go for fulfilling your duty, wherever it will be, they will invariably follow you and render assistance. They will create confusion in the minds of those who fall as victims to your weapons. They will hinder wise people in the path of knowledge in all possible ways. O oh, excellent sage, on hearing these words of mine, Kama, along with his mistress Rati and his comrade Spring, delighted a little. The groups of beings, too, after hearing this, surrounded me and Kama and stood in their own shape. Then I, Brahma, spoke to Kama lovingly. Do my bidding. Let these beings accompany you. You shall go again to enthrall Shiva. With full attention, you put forth further efforts so that Shiva may suffer delusion and take a wife unto himself. O celestial sage, on hearing these words, Kama humbly prayed homage to me, and considering the gravity of the matter, spoke to me again. Kama said, I have already made sufficient efforts in this matter of enchanting him. The delusion could not be effected, nor is it going to take place now, nor will it ever take place. Acting on your directive after giving it the due honor and after visiting my troops, I shall go again with all pomp and show. But I am certain that he will not be deluded. O Brahma, I have fears that he may reduce me to ashes. O great sage, after saying thus, Kama, accompanied by Vasanta and Rati, started with his troops to the abode of Shiva, despite the fear lurking in his mind. Kama employed all his wiles as before. Vasanta, too, employed various means, racking his brain in diverse ways. He used many tactics. His troops, too, tried their best. But Shiva, the great soul, was not afflicted the least. Kama then returned to my abode. I had great pride in his troops, but now distress and discomfort stood facing me. Oh dear, bowing to me with despair and dejection while standing before me without pride and arrogance, along with his troops and Vasanta, Kama spoke to me in these words. O oh Brahma, 
More efforts were put by us to enthrall him, but they all went in vain as he was absorbed in deep meditation. There my body was not reduced to ashes because he is merciful. My previous merits, too, may have been the cause. As for the Lord, there is no affectation or change in him. O Brahma, if you desire that Shiva should take a wife unto himself, you should employ some means with modesty. This is what I think proper in the circumstances. Brahma said, Saying this, Kama returned to his abode along with his followers after saluting me and remembering Shiva, the destroyer of arrogance and the favorite of his devotees.